So that being said, this little project grew quick. Here's where it started. Um, <laughs> I've watched a video on hydroponic lettuce and the guy had a container uh, which he had cut a hole in, put a net pot in and um, some rock wall and let a grad, I put some nutrient mix, just some simple tomato mix in there, put it by the window and it grew great. Um, and you'd think, oh, you know, maybe I did this one season, saw my lettuce and liked it, maybe then expanded to two or three of these and then, you know, but I mean, by, by the time I saw roots shoot out of the plant in this thing, indoors, I was hooked. <laughs> I was totally hooked. And one thing led to another, and I mean, the, the plant still has not been harvested yet. The very first one that I started with, and this thing has grown to a 10-slot lettuce tower, uh, a seed station over there with uh, three different sections. And then our tomato plants, which were started about a month ago. Um, all three in different environments. In fact, I've got a fourth one outside just to do some testing. But what I found amazing is, you know, I kind of expected that I would take pictures of each, you know, each week and kind of see the subtle differences in growth. But I mean, by the second or third week, it was just, it wasn't even a contest anymore. These things are just ginormous. Uh, this is a month of growth in this tomato plant. And we just got our first flower. It's a funky red because of the lights. I've tested several different versions of lighting as well. Now I was trying to go cheap and get these. Um, they're like floodlights and you, I made some cheap Home Depot lamp fixture there. <laughs> Probably not up to code. Um, but tell you the truth, it was 80 bucks to do that. And you know, it took me a weekend to do a few of them. This thing, the Viper Spectra, um, it was 89 bucks on Amazon. And um, I really like it. It just didn't make sense anymore to start, keep doing this. I'll order a couple more of these actually. But one thing I wanted to show you if I could is the height of this plant. This, this was by far the strongest plant. And man, I wish I don't have time to change the lights, but the stalk of this thing just compared to my hand, it's just unreal. I've never seen anything like it. Anyway, this plant was my star under these lights until I bought these two things. Um, and that plant right here was almost half dead <laughs> and I put it under this thing in two weeks and it's as tall as that one and it's like every day man it's got some new leaf stretching out trying to be the winner <laughs> and then this tomato plant was um, actually started in the tower uh, and I knew it couldn't live there for very long but it, it was pretty weak it just didn't get enough light and um, it was really struggling, but now it has totally rebounded again. It's almost as tall as the other two. So, um, if you were to see my outdoor plant, you'd just crack up. I mean, it's just nothing compared to the way that these things look. Anyway, so I added a fan. Um, they were getting a little bit droopy at points. I think it could have been the, the level of light that I put them on, so I've kind of been adjusting that. Um, but I added a fan to help pollinate. Uh, the tomatoes. I'm also going to do the flick trick. I guess you just kind of give the flower a little flick. Uh, I'll probably do that a little bit as well just to make sure. Um, and then over here is going to be sort of the final piece of the puzzle uh, is I'm going to try to do some cucumbers and peppers. I'm going to do four more stations over here. Man, I hope my wife will have some patience with me because this is just so much fun. Anyway, let me just show you this really quick. This, I, the problem with doing a drip system like this is that um, when you have multiple vintages of lettuce, if you will, so a couple of these were started earlier than the others. Well, from what I've learned is that you like to flush the plant with clean water um, at least a couple of days before you harvest. 
So what I've done is just created a little flush bucket. I've got two heads of lettuce in here. This will be our first harvest from the tower, which was started about um, yeah five weeks ago or so. So um, this will be our first harvest. It's kind of exciting. Uh, several of them have, have done really well, but it's been a, a definitely an up and down battle with this thing. I'm, I'm sort of leaning toward changing my lettuce to a deep water culture just because these tomato plants are deep water culture and the root structure is just unbelievable and it's very white uh, and it's simple to maintain there's no electricity for the pumps well I, actually I do run an air pump in it but I don't think that probably costs too much and that air pump that I can run probably eight plants on it um, so um, this I, I've struggled with because water evaporates when it trickles sometimes it wasn't trickling the right way like maybe one of the plants up top was kind of making the water shoot off in a very smooth um, pattern where it wasn't hitting the roots um, I've I had my pH go significantly uh, down and I think it was because of um, a response from the plants that they weren't getting something that they needed uh, and so I ended up having to redo the batch, but those types of things I just don't know that they're going to happen in a deep water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I've got some some lettuce Started over here. It's looking actually kind of weak um, And I'm going to maybe do a sample put a couple in the tower a couple in a, in a simple deep water culture bucket and Just see what happens um, and I'll try to videotape that as well. All right, last thing I wanted to show you that you can hear that, I think I have my hand over the mic, is uh, the deep water culture buckets that I'm creating for those four tomato plants. I have two dwarf determinants because I know they'll be uh, fairly easy to grow and short with um, small to medium sized fruit. The other two are actually indeterminate. One's a tomato plant, or a uh, cherry tomato plant, the other one is, I think, mortar toaster. And so those things are real viney, they're going to grow tall. Um, one interesting thing that I've learned is um, if you set your light uh, fairly close to the plant and get it accustomed to that, the, um, the size difference is more bulk, like in the stem and in the volume of flowers, or I'm sorry, the volume of leaves, um, and not tall. So I think I'm able to actually um, modify the height of the plant by finding that right balance in between, um, you know, the light uh, distance from the plant. So that's something else I'm trying. So far, I mean, these things are just super squatty and very thick. So um, I think even if it's going to be a seven or eight foot vine on a indeterminate tomato plant, I could try to modify that to where it just doesn't grow that hot. So anyway, that's my, my next trick that I'm going to try. So these are the four deep water culture buckets. Um, what I'm going with is this, um, I kind of started simple with the uh, general hydroponics flora series. Um, and then I was convinced that I I wanted to try the Cali Magic, and so far what I've seen from that, it's very helpful. Uh, in fact, there were some black spots on my lettuce at one point. They would eventually go away. It was on the brand new leaves, and the dot, you know, the spot would eventually go away, uh, but it was, I felt like the plant was trying to tell me something, and so I thought calcium might be one of those solutions. And the next batch of nutrient mix, I put it in there, and voila, it disappeared. So. Um, that was, I think, pretty helpful. Hopefully it wasn't just a random event, <laughs> but uh, for now that's my conclusion. I also have Rapid Start and Diamond Nectar, uh, especially for the, uh, the Rapid Start for the early growth. Um, so that, that stuff's a little more expensive than I really wanted to spend, but uh, from what I can tell, it, it's extremely high quality. And I have um, actually some, like those tomato plants outdoors in dirt, as well as some potato containers. And my 
uh, wasted nutrients. Like I'll, I'll keep this nutrients in for a couple of weeks and I'll discard of it. Um, and I'll go and pour that on all my outdoor vegetables. And each one of these deep water culture uh, buckets is built like this. Uh, I've seen many videos on this um, procedure, but it's just having a, plastic, a half inch plastic tube um, so that you can tell the water level and you can easily drain it. So I've got them up a little bit high and what I'm able to do is when it's time to change the water, I just leave the plant there. I've got this tube. I'll take it out and drain out the reservoir. And in order to make sure that thing doesn't get clogged up, I use uh, these things. Oops. These um, paint bucket strainers. Two bucks for like, or five bucks for like two of them at Lowe's. But I put that in there so that the roots um, don't grow into the tube. I can empty them out and then I fill them right back up into the into the top. So anyway, that's that's each one of these deep water culture buckets is like that. The nutrients mi mix has been done and it's time to move those tomato plants into these buckets and I'm gonna have to make some light modifications so that I've got room for them. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful for um, some of you and once again just thanks for all of your efforts and hopefully this is something you can use to help you grow hydroponically.